Hi guys, welcome back. So let's work in another video just to destroy another context, but I, at this point I think it's clear to you. But I want to show you in this case, also I have, just coming back to the previous video, uh, where we talk about rectangular win, tape, taper win, and twist angle, but I didn't mention about this compound uh, taper win which probably it is approximation to the elliptical one and let me show you the shape so basically to do this what you need to do is just divide it in several sections and see that slowly you're approximating a, a semi-lids okay so see here that you have that shape it's straight in the leading edge but probably you can adjust it a little bit more and then also will be uh, an elite here, okay? So these are these compound taper or semi elites or elliptical platform. So if you look at the leaf distribution as we were talking in the previous video and you start to adjust, you will see at the end you are going to arrive to an elliptical. We know that they have several problems this win from, from the point of view, how to manufacture that and maintenance and everything. So we prefer to have a simple taper and play a little bit with twists, ideal values. You can get to a very good distribution. Uh, to mention here that if you go into the one definition, look at that, you just need to add many there. You just need to add there many, uh, many sections and then you just play around with the core i think i already showed show in another video that for instance you want to add winlets you add another section and then this is the angle that you change so for instance let me put here 70 degrees and then you have it there but to capture this effect of winlets and we know that the winlets would reduce that tip vertex and everything modify the the, the lift distribution you need to use uh you, you, yeah, the lifting line theory, the one that is implemented here, uh, doesn't capture this effect. You need to use vortex lattice or panic method. I prefer, I recommend you to stick to the vortex lattice method. So that's what I wanted to show you here just before the starting to show you another type of analysis that you, you, you can do here uh, in batch mode so so far and let me pick up one win no and i will pick up this one the rectangular just for the sake but the same will be for every win so so far recall that when we define the problems and this particular one is you go back to the case if you go back to the case where we define this exercise and many other exercises that we have talked about i always given you some parameters okay and then i give you this maximum cruise speed okay so that is already a very good indication to design but in reality when you are designing and a new wind from scratch you don't know this value you don't know the power requirements of the engine anything so as you can guess you need to run a parametric design for different velocities different angles okay so that's what I want to, to show you. So, so far here we have been doing like this analysis and you know that value is this fixed one and you put 50 and then you compute, you have tapered different reynos and everything. But what if I don't give you this value and you need to do some trial and error. So it's clear that you can come here and then run 60, 70 and do all that stuff. But there are easier, easier ways because we can parameterize that. So let me show you the first one that you have here, type two, type four, type, type five. This one is just better size slip. We're not going to use, but you will get the idea how it works. So fixed lift, what we, a fixed lift, what we do is just, we define a weight and then the lift is fixed. Now it's going to run the program with the uh, different velocities, values and angles. So see that this, this, I don't know why this is an error here. This is the angle and this here, should be the size lead. Okay, this one, leave it to zero. So as you set up this one, it's very important that you need to define also the inertia, the, the mass of the of the body. So as you go into the inertia by default, you have something like this. Okay, so as you, pray, as you try to run, it, it will tell you that there is no inertia mass defined. Go here and you define. So you can define, you are designing the airplane, you can give the whole mass or the mass, your target mass, whatever. So let's say, recall from this exercise that we have been doing, we, we, we have been talking about 4,000 Newtons, that would be about 4,000 kgs, kilos. 
and that is our target mass. Okay, this is a force that we need to, to generate. So leave the position of the COG here. Okay, we also showed that in a previous video and save. So see that now we have a target mass. So it saved it with the automatic name. By the way, uh, I'm going to run using the vortex lattice method, okay? Uh, for easiness, because I don't want to regenerate those polars. And so just to recall, you go here in edit analysis and see fix lift okay and then you need to your target to define your target mass and pretty much that's all is you have location cg you can define that in our case we're not doing any stability so leave it like that uh so you define that and pretty much see that when we define the fixed lift see that we can run for a sequence of angles okay so let me go um, before running and just to bring back here, I will uh, come in here to the to the uh, X foil, the X, X uh, FLR5 side. And just to point out that you have here some very good presentations of oh, this is the developer. And I will open this theoretical overview just to refresh your memory about something that no, wasn't this one. So, okay, this one. Okay, yes, this one and the second one, we have some, some brief presentation, but just to refresh it. So the idea that these potential methods, what you are putting there, it's a generating circulation in the wind, and then there are different, different methods to take into account all that circulation. So we have seen the LLT method, that is one, and in X, XFLR5, you have two additional methods, BLN and panel methods. And just to clarify what is going on, Okay, is that here uh, in the LLT, what you do is that in each section, you, are, you have the 2D information of the airfoil and we have one single bound vortex and this is what we have. Okay, for each section, you have the vortex bounding and it's doing like this and then you are just integrating or interpolating the properties. In the VLM method, you need to do, so all the data is 2D, here the data now is 3D. So this, you see that why this one doesn't take into account these windlets or, or sweep angle effects, okay? Because it's everything that's coming from the geometry. So you will need from the 2D airflow. So somehow you will need to add some corrections here. As you have the actual geometry, you will take into account the, all those effects. So what you are doing is that the VLN, it takes only the camber line of your airflow, okay? It's seen surfaces. So that's why you don't see all the, the, the surface of your 3D design, just the camera line. And what you do is that we, we sell in the panel method, you add here your your source, your vortex or whatever, create circulation, and then just compute the influence of each one, each panel in the whole uh, in the whole surface. And that that's it, okay? And the panel method is something similar, okay? In the panel method, you have now the whole surface, okay? All this method, BLN and, and and the panel method. So right here, because they, they have limitations, implementation, but also from the theory. So here you have a very nice references to know a little bit, but generally speaking, BLM panel methods, you can do the whole, the whole geometry, okay? The whole stuff, you can take the influence of the tail and everything. BLN is just one win. You add some corrections and see so you, you can add the, 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 the elevator by adding the correction of the down watch, but that's all. So I just wanted to refresh that so i invite you to come here this is a very nice representations explanation so we're here and we want to see different modes okay so we we are already familiar fixing the velocity so let's run this one which was and to refresh the define analysis fix leaf we define the 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 leaf here see that oh, we're running in basic as well just to stress i don't want to to compute the the corrections from from the 2d analysis okay so if I press here, we're ready to go. So analyze and see that it's running and I have a solution. Okay, so you see that it run many com computations, these angles here, and see that I have for different angles, the target leaf, 4,000. So let me change this color here and put this one. So this is what it's telling me. All this angle we have fixed, that, that we, we have fixed that leaf. But what is changing here, so here you don't see anything, that constant line, but let me modify this plot here. So I have a four plot view and I go here, define, 
I want to see now in function's velocity because that is the other component that is being modified. So if I go here and I look at CL, this is what is happening. So with the blue line, that the one that we're looking. So see that the previous one, the green one was fixed velocity and you have all the angles. Here, what we have now is a velocity changing and the angle of attack is changing. So the solver automatically is computing, uh, the, is setting the velocities to produce this leaf. Okay, and this is the expected behavior. So remember that we increase velocity. Okay, I will instead of this value, let me put here the actual force. So, so it would be F set. Okay, sorry. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, so yeah, it's constant. So see that for each one, constant and what we're changing is the velocity and we have a dependence velocity because for that one it's also changing the angle of attack so let me come here and let me go here and i will select again here i will say y-axis show me velocity and this one show me alpha and this is what we have in function so see the, this is constant and these are all the angles that you tested in this one see that velocity is changing and it's testing all this angle so it's clear that for each combination we're going to have different behaviors right? but we're fixing for this combination we're fixing uh the delay force so this is just telling me here so as you go for instance at an angle of attack of two degrees you need to fly at this velocity okay so in our design design condition it was 50 the one that I gave you so, so you cross reference here you see that is that angle that we talk about one so or 0 0.8 but here now you have different combinations so it might happen that you you still you are designing the, your win but it's still you know their engine so you go to the manufacturers and probably the engine that the manufacturer is proposing produce a lot of a lot of power so you can get higher velocity so here you have all the <clears throat> all the possible now values that you can use to produce your tra target lift. So for instance, you want to go faster. So for instance, you want to give the maximum power that this engine can produce probably will be, let's say 70. So at 70, you know that you need to go a little bit negative, but it's still okay. It's producing, remember our goal is producing your lift. Then you will cross reference with the, with the drag Okay, so we have the curve here. Okay, and you can just you know, check the drag, how many, how much drag you are producing. So ideally, also at, at your cruise condition, what you would like to have is also the the CD zero or CD mean in your in your polar. See that here, your you, you, this polar is chief by a CD zero. Okay, so the green one, recall that we have the viscous effect. So likely you would like to have at this cruise condition, whatever, also this value minimum. So minimum induced drag, but this value also minimal. So as you see, this is another way to run your simulations. And now you can go at different, <clears throat> different leaf values as you want, and you will have different covers. Okay, so this is parametrical studies, and you need to cons construct a lot of these plots, ISO lines, and kind of a carpet plots. Okay, you can call it as well. So. <clears throat> let's move so you get the idea parametric study this is why we want to use also these solvers that are very fast and accurate okay well in good hands are accurate because doing all these curves and everything uh is very time consuming as you use cfd as you go also for experiments it can be time consuming energy consuming okay uh, and also expensive because probably you need to change models and changing those models can be very expensive. Okay, so this is one model way to do it. And let me show you the other way to do the, also this parametric study that in this case, we have three variables, okay? That will be angle of attack and velocity and X flow automatically, you know? So it will compute, <clears throat> I think, I don't recall, but you put a, a minimum value in the velocity, actually velocity cannot go negative, so probably will be zero or close to zero, the minimum velocity, and then it will keep going on or, 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 uh, until a maximum, don't recall, probably the maximum will be defined by compressibility or something like that, don't recall that, but 
We haven't used that option. So let's do the, the other analysis. So let's open analysis again and define a new analysis. So the new one is this one, fixed uh, type four, where we fix the angle of attack. So as you can guess, you will say here, fix your angle of attack. So let's say that I want to fix it to one that kind of corresponds to this condition there. Here, we don't need inertia, you can leave it, but we don't need it, okay? We save and see about what the difference here is now that we're free to play with the velocity. So we can say that, okay, let me go from velocities as low as 20, as 20 and as high as 120 and use this delta, let me use delta L of five. Remember that I'm running here uh, in visit, so I don't need to compute the Reynolds. If you run this with the physics correction, you need to compute the Reynolds for all these velocity values. So you will need to go here in uh, Xfold data analysis and have this table, okay, a lot of values. Uh, so if you do this table, now one, you, you will have it saved, so probably can be just to save time. So have the, this table from half million to 10 million increments of 100,000. Probably be below 1 million, the increment 50,000 and then 100,000 up to 10 million. So you have that table already ready there for all cases. So basically it's what we're doing here. Whoops, so I lost that case, that definition. I don't know, it should be which one here, here. So this is that the one I want to run, BLM. You see that we have all the angles, your uh, auctions and analyze, and off you go. Let me change the color to avoid confusion and let me put yellow. And this is the case. So if we look at the plot, so see that we fix the angle. We say it was one, okay? And what we're changing our velocity. So here we have it in the function of velocity and the the lift force. So see that velocity from 20 to 120, this is what you have. And then the optimal case that you're going to have the required lift will be this velocity. Okay. And here we don't have the values and so on. You can proceed. So for instance, now you can go and do a new one of this one. And I want to do it at zero degrees analyze and you start to con construct all those iso lines now that each one will represent you now a different velocity and you are going to construct very complex uh, plots here so usually when you go in design books you know, airplane design you will see all these plots are very complicated a lot of iso lines many carpet plots and that stuff so let me add another one that i want to do it at two so see that we fix angles change velocity and you will have all the possible combinations. I want to remind you also, let me go back here that things can get very complicated because also you have the IRO data. So you can rerun now the same angles, different density. So you, now you're going to see the influence now of density. Lower densities, you will know that you will have some corrections. So it can get, it's a lot of work. Okay, but here this potential solves that you do run many simulations very fast, affordable. You do this in CFD, it's very time consuming. Uh, so let me now change the color, this one, analyze. And there you go. So see that in this nice plot, we have different angles. Zero, one, three, and the influence. So for instance, if I want to fly at zero degree, uh, on at zero degrees, okay, I will need to reach this velocity something about, uh, something about 63. Then if I want to fly with a higher angle of, in, of attack will be two, I need to reduce the velocity. Okay, so then I will need to fly something about 43 and you have to be careful because you know that you have an installed velocity. So probably the installed velocity of this airplane is 40 meters per second. So this condition at two degrees is not ideal because you are too close to the installed velocity. So these are things that you always need to take into account. Uh, also, you can go here and you can check for each case. You can check now your your leaf distribution. So in this case, we have it in, in function of velocity. Okay, so each case that you plot. So let me okay, let me see that I want just to visualize this case and this one in particular. And here you have all your distributions. I don't know. Let me go this one forward. And you have everything here, and you can check 
your problem. So as here things get way much complicated. As you see, that you start to cross reference everything with different angles, velocity. Uh, getting that perfect elliptical distribution is not easy. So in this, this is a rectangular wind. If you go to the others that we have something closer, you will see that everything will change with velocity, angles, density, different corrections. So it's almost impossible to guarantee to have that elliptical uh, distribution. So that's why that design condition, the cruise condition is very important because you want to design your airplane for that specific mission. So as you know that whatever you are doing, it's going to spec spend 80% of the time flying at that condition, that's where you should optimize everything. Then you are going to have some off design conditions and nothing, it's nothing you can do there, okay? Probably you can add some other wave, no active mechanism to, to get better performance, but this is how you do. So, see here that now we have this distribution, different values here. So for instance, this one is two, you go here in function, it will be one degree angle of attack, okay, and I need to visualize. So we have it there, okay. So 160, see that we have the two. So you can do all the plops. And something important, another concept that I want to remind you about the induced induce drag. So let me go back to this dice here. Remember that the induced drag, it is a byproduct of the production, production of lift. So you, you, you get in this figure. Okay, so because we're producing this leaf, there is this downwash velocity here and that will generate an, an induced angle or downwash angle. So pretty much this is the responsible of that, okay? So see that you have this arrow representing you know, the intensity of that, that downwash velocity, downwash angle. And towards the tip is very large. So due to this induced angle, you are going to have an induced component of drag that is related to the leaf force, it's not an actual drag, no, like viscous drag is just related to the leaf force because now you are, you have the, the, this relative, no, your <clears throat> deviation now for, for, from this component. So this is induced drag. So you can guess that what we want to do in reality, we want to reduce this downwash component. Okay, to reduce intensity. It is impossible now to, to eliminate these, these wind tick vortex. And when you are designing the wind, do not try to visualize these tick vortex. It's just, it's better to look at this downwash angle. So when we go here in these plops, also you see that you have the induced angle. Okay, so this is what probably is better to look at, at okay, instead of trying to visualize that, that, that wind tick vortex. So see that in this case, this is the induced angle that we have as expected by theoretical and computation experiment, experimental results. You have this distribution and towards the tip, see that it's very large and there in the tips is where you are generating a lot of induced drag and then due to the three-dimensional effects also you are going to have to that wind. But if we look at different winds and see that, let me go now to this taper here and as we like to look at different uh, similar conditions, see that in this one, we, by adding the twist, see that how we're controlling. And then towards the tip, okay, and let me go a single graph, this one. We have, this but it's a, sm a smaller component compared to this one. Okay, so in, let me go this one that is similar velocities. And see that this one is something too, it's something large, it's about two, okay, four, until four, let's say that it's about 20% of the wind, wind span. See that you have an induced angle larger than zero, 0 0.8, that is a lot. In this case, if we go something similar, it's much, much lower. So let's say that here you have something, it's starting to go above 0 0.8, much less than than probably let's say four percent of the wind so see that this this is why this one is producing less induced drag because we're controlling this downwash and that component that you have here this component is reduced that is something that you cannot avoid you're going to have it there but 
If you are clever, you can reduce it. And if you check all the other wins, you will see different behaviors. Interesting concept is we go to the re rectangular win, and remember that a rectangular win is the, the only one that we can have, no? The elliptical leaf distribution, the elliptical seal distribution, and also elliptical circulation. So let's, let me take a look at this one. It was this one with twist. Okay, and let me pick uh, this one and see that if we start to look at local leaf, this is very, very nice, elliptical, CL, elliptical is not here. What we would like is to have something uniform, to have the the uniform downwash. Remember the elliptical wheeling will give you a uniform downwash. And this is what we have. But see that it's uniform and then here it grows. And it's quite large. So see that we approximate very well the, that elliptical behavior here in one part, but towards the tip, now it grows a lot. And then comparing with the other wing, the taper here. Okay, so let me take the image to do that comparison and see how bad or how good it is here. So as I go now here, okay, so this is what we have. Okay, so. This is the rectangular. And so that rectangular is something about 0 0.6. So here is a little bit larger, but it's becoming lower, much lower, and then it grows up to 1.6. So as you start now to measure here, you will see that this one will give you lowest uh, induced drag. Okay, so this is another way. Look at the induced drag, okay? So look at your, your leaf distribution, everything, but as I say in previous video, it's almost impossible if you are using a pure taper wing with only twists, it's almost impossible to to get uh, that electrical distribution unless you start to use washing. If you use washing, yeah, you might get it, but it's not desirable. So just focus towards the teeth. Probably you manage to get something about 20% of the outward section of your wing to, to be close to, to the electrical. That is a, a good result. So let's see what else I can cover. I think that is all. Okay, so now we have all this analysis. Okay, so we have covered this one. This one type five is just for the size for stability. So we're not interested in that one. So we have type one, type two, type four. Okay, so depending on what you want to do, you pick up one. Most of the time is this fixed speed because we have that reference speed, but if you don't have it, you will go something like this or like this to get some estimates. Remember that as you are doing fixed lift, you will need to define your weight, okay? In the others, you don't need to do it. I recommend you to do these studies using the vortex latex method and disable the viscous, but if you want, you can go for the LLT. If you use the LLT, remember that you need to have all the polars for the possible combinations of Reynolds numbers that you will cover in your, in your win. So I guess, that's all okay we cover a lot at this point you feel free to play around and maybe in the future we'll prepare some other videos is i guess get some some requests so thank you for your attention see you see you next time bye